I will not meet with Mr. Hicks today, tomorrow, or ever, no matter what office I hold in this state. And you can print that for the record. We have never restricted anyone from having access to a commissioner, either in person in this office, or by telephone, or by text message, or by uh, email. Board this morning, um, I'd like to know if there's any discuss discussion regarding our health orders that are in place at the current time. Um, just as a, a reminder that um, action was taken by this board on March the 18th, 2020, and due to the pandemic and the emergency orders, um, and it became effective on March 23rd, 2020, to spend, suspend our public participation due to those Ohio Department of Health and the governor's orders. Um, it's my understanding now that the Ohio Department of Health and the governor is lifting our orders on June the 2nd, 2021. Um, and this is all in accordance with the CDC guidelines. And um, there's a lot of guidelines still to keep the safety and procedures and guidance in these health orders, like for transportation, et cetera. So I'm going to ask the board at this point, um, after we finish our discussion, to possibly add a motion onto the agenda. So is there anyone else who would like to discuss this this morning? Any other discussion? What, what would the motion what would the motion look like sound like well i'd like to go in to add, do an addition to the agenda we can go to that right now if you'd like to sure that's fine <clears throat> okay um i'd like to add to the agenda this morning under item e which is a motion to ask the board to consider um to add today to direct our administrator mr eigel to prepare a resolution to be presented at our next meeting on may the 26th 2021 to renew our public participation policy that we had suspended due to these previous orders. And that's the motion I'd like to ask for now on the floor. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Well, first of all, we have to add it, correct? We have to add it. Okay. Motion to add. Is there a second to add? Oh, Ed? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Any further discussion on that? What would be the day that we go back to regular you're going to prepare it. We're asking Tom to get it prepared. When are we? Get, when it, will it be effective? June second. So 2nd. it would be effective the, uh, at the next regular session. So if you if you would um, vote to approve that on the 26th, okay. it would go into effect on June second. Okay. That's our next regular session. Okay. Any further discussion? No, that's it. Thank you. Call the roll, please. Um, Commissioner Bachelor, Yes. Commissioner Painter? Yes. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. Now I'll entertain a motion, now that we've added it, um, a motion to consider adding it today to this agenda. Um, the motion we've already added, I'm asking for a motion to prepare a resolution to be done by Mr. Eigel, our County Administrator, to be presented at our meeting on May the 26th, 2021, um, to go into effect on June the 2nd. 2021 to renew our public participation policy. So moved. Is there a second? I will second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Commissioner Painter? Yes. Commissioner Bachelor? Yes. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. Any other additions this morning to the agenda? There's no other additions. Thank you. Um, now we're moving on to member comments, item G. Any comments this morning? No comments. Um, I have one, my Ms. Bachelor, Commissioner Bachelor. Do you have any comments this morning? I would like to discuss when are we going then to be able to remove these masks. So the, as you're aware, so the governor announced that on June second, the all the public health orders will be rescinded. Now there are certain things that they have to keep in place. I think it's regarding some congregate care facilities. Um, and, and some other, I think the, the current order, it doesn't apply to uh, jails and um, prison facilities, nursing homes, assisted living facilities, or adult uh, service centers for elderly adults. So, um, but the, the order that was issued on the 17th um, says 
as per uh, Governor DeWine announced, the vast majority of health orders, except some orders for safety and congregate living in health settings and some technical matters will be rescinded on June 2nd, 2021 at 12.01 a.m. So briefly, in short, except in certain limited circumstances, fully vaccinated persons may safely do most activities without a facial covering and without socially distancing. As such, unvaccinated individuals should continue to protect themselves using mitigation measures such as masking and social distancing. Persons who are not fully vaccinated should continue to wear a mask, socially distance, avoid large gatherings whenever possible, be outside for activities and gatherings. And I'm just reading some different parts of the order related to mask coverings. Um, section one under facial coverings, in accordance with the guidance issued on May 13th, 2021 by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, all fully vaccinated people and they define that as fully vaccinated persons, uh, refers to a person who is uh, greater than or equal to two weeks following receipt of the second dose of a two dose series and two weeks following the receipt of a one dose series can resume activities without wearing a mask. However, vaccinated individuals must continue to wear masks on all planes, trains, buses, and other forms of public transportation. So obviously that, that would impact our CTC drivers. They would have to continue to wear masks while they're driving the buses. Um, also, um, it allows individual businesses to make those decisions. So if our building inspectors have to enter a business and the business, business is requiring individuals to wear a mask, those inspectors would have to wear a mask. I'm sure it's gonna to apply to our DJFS individuals that, that have to enter homes or places of business as well. If that business decides they want people to wear a mask or that homeowner requires them to wear a mask, they should comply with that. So that's basically the order in a nutshell on mask wearing. Um, so, and then we have to have signage posted on the building. So uh, uh, we checked with ODH and they said that there was supposed to be signage for us to post. <coughs> signage is not there yet. So we'll likely go ahead and just post our own sign in accordance with the order. Uh, so are you saying that we can now? All vaccinated individuals. Yeah. Hello, thank you. <laughs> thank you, you thank you. <laughs> Holy cow. I think we have all hated wearing those, but I think they have had their benefits. I know there are some people that don't agree with that statement, but if it's benefited anyone, I'm glad I did it to protect my family, my friends, my coworkers. So today's a good day. Commissioner Painter, I understand why you still have your songs. So Correct. your day will come soon. So um, let's just talk about one other issue on that. You know, we've talked about the, the dropping of the masking requirements. Obviously, we've had two thirds compliance today. Um, the other issue is the declaration of an emergency. Sure. You know, obviously, the governor of the state declared an emergency. We declared emergency on what was it, March the 18th. And we do not plan on lifting that emergency in such, until such time that the state declares that an emergency no longer exists. Is that correct? Yeah, that's our, that's my recommendation at this time. And there are a couple of reasons for that. One is obviously that declaration activated the EOC. And while it's not as active as it used to be, if any such time during the summer, if we have an issue, they can continue to operate out of the EOC. The second is it authorized the administrator to execute contracts up to 100,000 without going out for bid. And that, and that may be useful as we continue down the line with these CARES funds and then the American Rescue Plan funds. Right. Um, Typically after an emergency declaration, you know, not too long after that, there's some funding mechanism right. that could, could may be made available that would allow you to be reimbursed for obviously dollars that you spent to aid in the emergency. Yeah, that, and you know, originally we thought that would be the case um, and the CARES funds came and then the American Rescue Plan funds, they didn't tie it to that declaration. But like you said, Commissioner Painter, you never know in the future if they continue to tie dollars to that declaration. Mm -hmm. And then as far as us enforcing any type of mask requirement in this building, let's talk about that for a second. Um, we have no, no warranty and no requirement to ask someone if they have been vaccinated since that has hit the information to them. So am I correct in saying that there'll be no enforcement of a mask requirement here in this building or in any county building in Claremont County? Is that correct? That's correct. Unless there is a, um, I, I'll continue to check with legal regarding that 
that question about asking whether or not someone is vaccinated. And then also there could be some court orders as well. And I'll, I'll have to get clarification by June 2nd for you on that. No problem. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your work on that. Um, yeah, and then and the other item we had is just our critical event policy. So I met with the HR staff yesterday. So we're gonna go through that policy and we'll have a recommendation to the board on that policy on June 2nd as well. And there's one other thing to talk about there is public participation in this meeting. You know, I would assume that we would resume to all previous uh, protocol prior to us calling that emergency as of June the 2nd. That's correct. So we've resumed public participation. The rules have not changed at this right. point um, regarding that. Um, so we just resume as they were when we suspended them. Right. Okay. So part of that resolution that we passed this morning in that direction will be to obviously suspend, we, we suspended in accordance with Article 7, public participation, and that will be to lift that suspension. Be to renew That's it. correct. And go right back to public participation. That's correct. Okay. Good morning. Mr. Hicks, could you be sworn in, please, yes, if you intend to give testimony? I solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give in this subject matter is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you, Judge. Yes, Ernie. Thank you, Mr. Remus. Okay, so I am Chris X from 444 Woodward Court, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45255. I'm here to speak in opposition to the proposed vacation of a portion of Klepper Lane. I oppose any such actions until you fully reopen your meetings to the public and fully restart public participation. I can stand here now only because you are statutorily required to let people speak in a public hearing such as this but you will not allow citizens in the room for public participation at your regular meetings for now 14 months, and you will not even allow public participation via Zoom. Now I'm fully aware only because I listened on the car while driving here of the, that you took an action to have a resolution for a resolution a little bit ago in this meeting. So I'm aware of that, but again, you're not open yet. And it's absurd why we need a resolution to have a resolution, just open. As I came up here, I happened to look, I noticed on the back door of the building and I noticed on, then I went to the front door of the building, the masking signs in this building are already gone. Okay, I walked through the auditor's lobby, no masking signs or anything in the auditor's lobby anymore. Just last week, those were all there. So let's quit the absurdity in the show, in the show. And I appreciate you ladies taking your mask off. Okay, finally, uh, as you're both fully vaccinated and as Ron DeSantis says, it undermines credibility of the vaccine when vaccinated people still wear masks. But let me continue and finish my remarks relating to my opposition to this vacation of a portion of Klepper Lane until you fully reopen. Last week on Local 12, Ms. Corcoran said anyone could set up one-on-one -on -one meetings with commissioners. In the actual meeting, Mr. Painter said, quote, we have never restricted anyone from having access to a commissioner either in person in this office or by telephone or by text message or by email. So I asked Mr. Painter to meet with me. He agreed, a meeting was set up for 10 o'clock on Tuesday. I even got a calendar invite. After it was set up, I shared the topics I wish to discuss, economic development, COVID-19 response, back toward and the animal shelter. And I asked three additional things. I would like to live stream our video or video record the meeting, is that okay? If, I, if a member of the press wanted to attend with me, is that okay? Also, could we possibly meet in the commissioner's meeting room or in the conference room across the hall? He immediately canceled the meeting. He said, quote, my decision is to not meet with you had nothing to do with the topics you picked. It has everything to do with you and your need to control the meeting. And quote, as always, your negative spin on the topics and recording requests are not the factual reason that I declined our meeting. So it wasn't the topics, it wasn't the, the recording. So I still don't know why exactly Mr. Painter reversed gear on having a meeting with me. So, or, or why we have to wait for more action to open these meetings back up. It's very important, this forum where people can talk in public, on camera. And you, you know, it's the only time a citizen can address all three commissioners legally at one time. Okay, there's no other forum in which a citizen can do all three at one time. I wanna close with a backstory that I think relates to this. You're all Republicans, I'm a Republican. You're not, you guys aren't on the Central Committee, Mr. Painter's wife is. 
you know, and oh, you are, Bonnie, you are on the Central Committee. I'm on the Central Committee. And la this morning, a member sent out a note because I had proposed that there be a resolution at the meeting tonight that the party compel our commissioners to reopen their meetings. I had nothing to do with the note. It was a pleasant surprise when I saw it this morning. And I want to read one paragraph out of it, a note from a citizen member of the Republican Committee. Quote, I feel compelled to voice my opinion and desire for this body to openly admonish our Claremont County leadership for their lockout of citizens during this pandemic. This is obviously intentional and disheartening. It is frankly embarrassing how our county leadership has behaved and treated citizens during this pandemic. I am grateful for the few who are speaking up and raising the flag of concern and driving the required open access to our leadership and processes in the county. It may have no authority, but it sends a signal and message of disappointment and need for stronger transparency in local government. I thought that was spot on. I wish I would have written something like that. So now you have a resolution to have a resolution. Why didn't you just reopen your meetings? Why didn't you just say today that we're going back to the rules immediately? Why that more charade? And I want to comment one other thing before I totally finished with the last paragraph. I listened. I only know about your action because I was listening in the car while driving here. By the way, it's kind of hard to listen. I wasn't watching the video. It's hard to get Facebook to play through my Bluetooth and so forth. It's not easy to listen to a commissioner meeting while driving on even streamed on live stream. One of the things I heard, though, was that you're not going to list the state of emergency. And one of the things I thought was interesting was Mr. Eigel saying the state of emergency allows you to do what, if I understood correctly, contracts with a, of $100,000 without competitive bids. The state of emergency should be lifted immediately too. You guys are supposed to be fiscal conservative Republicans. I know you're excited about the $40 million in Biden bucks printed in Venezuela, but the idea that we continue would continue to have a policy where we can have no, no bid contracts of $100,000 in this county, that is absurd. I didn't even know about that because I hadn't studied enough, so I appreciate you mentioning it in the discussion, uh, Mr. Eigel. So my closing pa paragraph. Thank you for the chance to speak here today. If any of you want to cross-examine me on the reasons that I would propose the vacation of part of Klepper Lane, that you shouldn't do any vacations until the meetings are fully reopened, please do so now. If you have comments about what I've said, please make the comments while I'm in the room, not right after I get locked out on the other side of the hall. And make sure to have the courtesy to talk to me to my face not behind my back after I've been pushed out the door. Thank you guys. Are there any questions for me? Are there any commentaries about me that anybody would like to make while I'm still in the room? Okay, thank you guys very much. Thank you. Your comments are always so insightful and helpful. Thanks. You know, before we close, I'd just like to address one of the statements that was made here today. It's about the uh, emergency declaration. You know, obviously, I know Mr. Hicks is a is a uh, expert on every particular issue, except uh, he's not much of an expert on on uh, government agencies. You know, I think we talked about the fact that if we were to uh, end this emergency declaration that it would also end our ability to be reimbursed for any costs that we may have incurred due to that emergency declaration. So that's why I'm not in favor of doing away with the emergency declaration. Tom, I don't believe that you've made any procurements as far as the emergency declaration that would have required a $100,000 purchase no, without a uh, competitive bid. Yes, sir. And I'm sorry to interrupt. It's very clear in the declaration. So if you, back in March when we issued it, there's a whole paragraph on that issue. So to act like it's a surprise. Yes. Um, it, it's no surprise. It's it's very clear that 50 to 100,000, it allows some flexibility. Right. And, and Wade is here. He can attest to the fact that we have HVAC work that we had to do as a result of the pandemic. That's not easy to be under $50,000. And right. you have to right. be very nimble to be able to address those issues quickly. So it's only up to 100,000. So their authorization to bid is 50. It gives you the extra $50,000 to be able to address issues. You have to get three estimates, three quotes. So you can't just go out and just hire whoever you want. You still have to get three estimates. 
Anybody who wants to read the emergency declaration, there's a whole paragraph about that. It says exactly what my duties and responsibilities are. So it should not come as a surprise. And, and you bring up that that emergency declaration, Wade, you're in the room. It allowed us to act very, very quickly when it came to adding uh, sanitation uh, capabilities to all of our HVAC equipment throughout this county to protect the public and obviously our employees. The second thing I wanted to address was the fact that I canceled that meeting. It is no secret amongst Claremont County and the people who follow Mr. Hicks that he wishes to get uh, lots of videotape and recorded conversations with public officials so that when he chooses to run for office against you, that it can be used against your uh, to his advantage and, and against you. I, I want to assure you that... Uh, you know, it had my my reason to cancel had nothing to do with the subjects. It had everything to do when he finally made his real request known that what he wanted was video footage and uh, recorded conversations. I will not meet with Mr. Hicks today, tomorrow or ever, no matter what office I hold in this state. And you can print that for the record. No one is restricted from coming and talking to a commissioner. You know, anyone in Claremont County that wants to visit or come to this office, this office has been open five days a week through the entire pandemic. Um, I personally have been in this office. I know both of my fellow commissioners have been too. We have never restricted anyone from having access to a commissioner, either in person in this office or by telephone or by text message or by uh, email. Thank you. Announce comments. I just want to clarify, yeah. I just discussed with Wade, uh, the, the iWave system that we installed throughout the county and Wade, yeah. if you want to comment, but that did exceed the 50 up to 100,000. So I had said that I didn't believe we had, I do believe we had that and some other HVAC equipment. That equipment is expensive. Yes, very much. So it's very yeah. hard to get that equipment for under $50,000. So thank goodness we had that in place. Otherwise we would not have been able to, to install those iWave systems in our, our system. Correct. So I just want to make sure that was clear. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. that. So now we're completed with our public hearing this morning.